Hi everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. So today we're gonna to make a wonderful spring recipe. It's a string, spring minestrone soup. It's gonna highlight lots of flavors of in-season ingredients. Um, you know, this is good opportunity not only to incorporate what's readily in season, but this minestrone soup can be manipulated to incorporate whatever vegetables are in season. So I have a great fall recipe as well that I do um, for my minestrone soup. So today we're going to start with some basic ingredients um, and cut those, chop those up. I like to have everything kind of chopped and ready to go. It makes building the soup a lot easier. We're also going to incorporate that vegetable stock. So remember that vegetable stock that we made, um, recipe number one? This is where we're going to incorporate that in. So I will show you, I saved my vegetable stock in two quarts. Um, I measured it after we made it and I know I talked about saving it in smaller size quantities. So I knew I wanted to make this recipe so I have my two quarts available. I don't even have to measure it. Um, we are going to start by chopping up our celery and our shallots and then we'll get those started. So it's just two stalks of, of celery. So for a soup, I don't get too picky about how it looks. Um, you know, I try to keep it in about bite-sized pieces. Um, if you're making a stew, then obviously you can make it into kind of bigger chunks. Um, but I try to keep mine about bite-sized. So we're gonna chop up our celery. That looks like a good kind of bite-sized piece. nice thing about plant-based soups, it's also an opportunity to incorporate whatever you have on hand. So, um, you know, whatever veggies that you might have left over in the fridge um, that you need to use up, you know, use veggies too that you enjoy. Um, so if there's an ingredient and you're like, I don't really like that, well, let's find a different ingredient that you like better. So this recipe calls for shallots. Um, Shallots have a nice, um, I think they have a little bit uh, milder flavor than onion. You know, a lot of people, you look at a shallot and this calls for two shallots. And I open up my shallot and there's like two chunks and they're like, is that two shallots? To me, I don't know, that's one shallot to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I have another one here. I'm gonna cut up another one. Like I said, I don't get too fussy over, over soups. Um, it's kind of choose your own adventure kind of a, of a, a recipe. Um, you can, you know, do small onions instead. If you have some leeks available, do leeks instead. They would be great. Um, same with like when we talked about the stock. You know, use what you have and use what you like. Um, I might just, this one kind of seems to me like he's on his last legs. So I might chop this little piece up too. I like to, before um, I start making any of my recipes, have everything out, washed and ready to go. It just makes it really easy to put together then. Um, and then we don't have to worry about going back and washing. Oh, this guy doesn't want to even come apart. All right. I'm taking the, the yucky parts off. It wasn't the prettiest shallot. Okay, now we got to the nice parts. All right, I'm gonna rinse these two shallots off. They were kind of messy. All right, again, so cutting my shallots, I get I don't get too picky about how I want them in kind of you know bite-sized pieces. So I'm just kind of kind of slice them thin. They don't have the same kind of a bite than an onion does, for example. So leave them a little bit bigger. These I have to just kind of chop in half. And I might just run my knife through it this way. Whatever you like, whatever you prefer, you go for it. This is your opportunity to, to do it the way you like it. soup to have a little bit of texture to it. Um, that's how I like it. Perfect. And I'm going to cut this one half. That needs to 
pretty shapes. All right. So again, if you don't have shallots or couldn't find shallots, onion, leeks work just fine. So just about maybe a small onion. All right, so I'm gonna come over and my next, we're gonna chop up our um, garlic. So it calls for about two tablespoons of chopped garlic. These cloves are huge. So to me, I'm probably gonna get about a tablespoon from each one. Um, again, it doesn't have to be exact, but to me, that's about what size they are. So I'm just doing two cloves. If your head of garlic, the cloves are much smaller, then you might wanna just do um, a few smaller ones. We're gonna chop this up nice and fine. If you don't like pieces of garlic in there, you certainly can grate this on your grater or your microplane. That would be fine too. We're just chopping it up nice and fine. And most things in the kitchen, I find chopping and cutting things, I don't know, to me they're very relaxing, very therapeutic. I will say garlic is the one thing that I find tedious because it, it needs to be so small. Um, sometimes I cheat and get out like my chopper and just throw it in there and chop it up. This is the one step that I don't really enjoy. This garlic is strong. It's about making my eyes water. This time of year, um, garlic skates are available. Um, so this would be a good recipe too. If you're like, I have these garlic scapes somebody gave me and I don't know what to do with them. This soup would be a great place to put them. Um, we made, if you watched earlier, I did a pesto recipe. Um, you certainly could make your pesto and add garlic scapes to that. Um, I was watching, I like to watch different people making recipes. I do lots of recipe research and, um, Somebody was talking about incorporating wild garlic into their pesto, which is something I have never used before. All right, so here's my garlic. It's all chopped up. I'm gonna put it in a bowl like that. And that's about two tablespoons. If you're not, I love garlic. To me, it's never enough, but um, you can always adjust that. Okay, so the next flavor that is kind of an interesting add-on to this, and this is optional, but I do recommend it, is fresh ginger. So you don't want to substitute ground ginger. This needs to be fresh ginger. It is an optional ingredient. You don't have to add it, but I just think it adds just a whole layer of interesting flavor that, you know, people eating it are just going to be like, what is that in there? And I'm like, oh, it's my secret ingredient. So ginger is got a, a kind of a skin on the outside. I have watched some um, chefs who who just incorporate the whole thing and use the skin. I have not reached that level yet, so I remove it. I just use my um, vegetable peeler and I just take the skin off. Um, if you feel like, eh, I'm gonna leave it, it's fine. It's totally edible. Um, I don't think it's terribly pretty. Um, and I just, I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit tough. I, I don't know, to me, I take it off. But to each his own, and you may certainly just chop it up and leave it on there if you'd like. I'm just using my peeler. You could use, certainly use a knife and take it off, but I feel like my peeler works just fine. Um, and you could also adjust how much if you're like, mm, I don't know that I'm gonna love that. Just start with a little bit um, and, and see what you think of it. You might be really surprised. Fresh ginger is just, such a interesting um, flavor and it just got has such a I mean just smelling it right now I always feel like it just has kind of almost a citrusy aroma to it it's wonderful it is a little bit tougher and a little more fibrous than chopping garlic so you do need to have a pretty decent sharp knife to get through it um, and I chop it just like I do my garlic it just requires a little bit more elbow grease because it is a little bit more fibrous. Um, not as, as soft as garlic is. 
And again, we don't have to be too picky about getting it too small. I do like chopping the garlic better, or the ginger better than the garlic. <laughs> so when I was saying I don't love chopping garlic, I do like chopping ginger because it smells so good. Um, it's just got such a delicious smell. So if you got, got your ginger in your bin, you will notice they give you a wonderfully generous portion of garlic from, or from ginger from fruit and produce. And there are lots of great ways to incorporate it. And I will feature some other recipes later on down the road using fresh garlic. So don't feel like, oh gosh, I've got all of this fresh uh, ginger. I keep calling it garlic. Fresh ginger and I don't know what to do with it. Um, do not fear, we will be using it later. Um, and I'm trying to make each week sort of carry over into the next so you can see how planning plant-based meals, how easy it can be. Um, if you do just spend the time kind of planning a little bit ahead, you have all these wonderful ingredients just ready for you. All right, so that's my ginger and garlic. Um, so then I'm gonna come over, I also have the asparagus. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop everything now. Um, so it's just kind of all ready to go. So, you know, a lot of people do the snap mechanism um, for their asparagus where you just kind of snap off the end. I'm just going to kind of trim off the end. Some of these are a little thicker than other ones. Um, so I do want kind of the tougher part off. Something that I learned about asparagus that I did not know was you would think the, the skinnier the asparagus, the more flavor it has, but it's actually the opposite. You want the fatter asparagus and the nice big fat asparagus is the kind that has the most flavor. So I thought that that was really interesting. And you might notice early in the season um, that the real fat stuff is the more readily available. Um, and yeah, start your local. So we're just chopping this into about half inch pieces. Um, again, kind of bite size. Asparagus does not take very long to cook. You can kind of leave the little heads intact. We just want to make sure the stems are cut into about half inch pieces. Again, about bite size. So I'm going to push that to the side of my cutting board. And then I'm going to come on to come to a little add in because whenever I'm making something, I always look through my fridge and say, okay, what do I have in there that I really need to use up? That I kind of forgot about, you know, it's it's that um, you know the vegetable morgue in there that you're like, oh gosh, I forgot I bought that. Um, so I have these beautiful mushrooms that I had in my fridge. I tend to overbuy mushrooms. I really like mushrooms. Um, we eat them quite a bit. Um, if you've got something extra veggie wise and you're like, oh, I'd really like to, I'm gonna throw that in with my um, with my shallots and my celery because um, I just. I think it's just going to be another layer of flavor. You really can't go wrong. Um, these are local. These are Iowa mushrooms. Um, and I just, I, I have it. It's kind of like buying shoes. I, I buy oh, too many mushrooms. I don't know why. I think because they're so pretty. And I'm just like, oh, those mushrooms look so delicious. And they're so pretty. And I just buy too many of them. So I incorporate them in a lot of things. It does make it too, if you're you know, transitioning to more plant-based cooking and you're like not sure you can get away from doing meat, um, it adds a real meatiness to your recipe, a real heartiness. Um, so I'm gonna throw those in with those. So we've got those veggies chopped, our asparagus is ready. I wanna use one of my favorite freezer ingredients in here. It's not cheating. These are wonderful. We're gonna use frozen peas. These are great. Um, it also saves you an extra step. Cleaning and breaking down peas takes a lot of time. Um, so these are just frozen peas. They're no salt added. Um, they're readily available all the time. So we are gonna use frozen peas. Um, here's another one that I kind of adjusted a little bit. Um, if you have 
baby kale, which is probably in your bin, either kale or maybe Swiss chard. Um, you can use that in here. I happen to have a whole bag of spinach in my fridge that I needed to use up. And this was um, in one of my bins. Uh, so I am going to use spinach in this and all I'm doing is just kind of rough tearing it apart. Um, it's going to break down pretty good in the water. Um, but we want it to kind of be in bite-sized pieces. Again, this is a soup. Um, you want to be able to stick your spoon in and get through it. If you have really tough pieces, if you're using like regular Swiss chard, you'll want to stem it and chop it. Regular kale, you'll want to stem and chop. Um, I'm not even going to put my knife into this. I am really just going to tear it up. You could do the same thing with your kale um, or your Swiss chard. Just tear it up. I love the um, Lacinato kale, or they might, you might know it by the name of dinosaur kale. Kind of looks like, like lizard skin. Um, that's delicious. Um, you also want to stem that and then just tear it into sort of smaller pieces that you can fit onto a spoon. Um, so the baby, since I'm not using baby spinach, I do have some stems. So I am taking the tougher stems off, um, just peeling them off. I don't want the thicker stems. Otherwise I'd have to cook it a little bit longer and chop them and there's not a lot of them. So I'm just gonna remove them. All right, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna come over to my pot. Come on cameraman. I'm gonna turn my heat on. So over here I've got a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. So I haven't talked about it yet very much, but there has been actually some um, studies talking about the benefits of olive oil for cancer prevention. Um, and I think why the Mediterranean diet has been looked at so much with cancer prevention is that olive oil is a big component of Mediterranean diet and there has been good evidence that it is um, beneficial um, to reduce cancer risk. So I'm gonna move my pan, that was my pine nut pan. We're going to let our oil heat up just a little bit here. So it's a, it calls for um, some small pasta. Um, I am using orzo and a lot of people think orzo is a grain. It's not. It's actually pasta. Um, but you can use any kind of very small pasta. You can use the dilatini. Um, you can use like little stars. Um, whatever you can find, I happen to find orzo, so it's a cup of pasta. If you are gluten-free, you can certainly use a gluten-free pasta instead. The nice thing about doing the pasta, it's not a huge quantity. Um, yes, it will contribute some carbohydrate to the recipe, but I think when you're doing a plant-based recipe as a meal, it makes it a little bit heartier. It makes it a little bit more filling without doing a huge portion of pasta. It's not like sitting down and eating a pasta dish. It just adds another layer to this for the fullness um, and, and you know, pasta is okay to incorporate. It's just learning how to incorporate it in a very helpful way. You can see the majority of this recipe is vegetables. Um, so it just adds another layer of heartiness um, and makes us a little bit fuller when we're eating this as a meal. So I always kind of wait and start to smell your olive oil. You don't want to overheat it. Um, it will start to have that nice shimmer, that nice sheen on it. Then I'm gonna come over and grab my veggies to start with. So I'm doing my shallots and my celery and my, my add-in mushrooms. So these we just to go for about five minutes. We're gonna soften just a bit. Now at this point, I'm gonna grab it off my counter. Sorry, cameraman. I am gonna um, salt and pepper my layers um, because I wanna make sure every layer has flavor. So I'm going to add some cracked black pepper. This is where you can kind of adjust your flavors and seasonings as you wish. And I talked about this when we made the stock that I don't over salt my stock because I'm gonna salt my layers of things and season my layers of things that I'm gonna use my stock in. 
So I'm going to add maybe a quarter teaspoon just to season this layer. Grab my measuring spoon. Sorry, I don't usually use measuring spoons <laughs> when I cook by myself. And I always have to remind myself when I'm cooking with you, I have to show you what I'm measuring. So I'm only going to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt to this layer. I just want to add a little bit of flavor to these veggies. Now something some people do, don't know is that um, vegetables do naturally contain some salt. They get salt from the soil that they're grown in. So even if you're on a low sodium diet, it's not going to be a no sodium diet if you're eating vegetables or even meat because, you know, people, humans, we store, we have some, some salt, you know, that's stored throughout our body. And if you eat the flesh of another animal, you're going to get salt that way too. So you'll never truly be on a no salt diet, but you can be on a low salt diet. Um, and I don't have to over salt this recipe because I did add some to my stock, but I'm able to control that because I made my own stock. So that's the nice part too. And I have said it before, when we were making stock, I have forgotten to add the salt to my stock before. I don't like things overly salty anyway, but I'm gonna layer my other veggies. This already smells so good. I like this recipe too, so if you have anyone in your household who is just getting started learning how to eat plant-based um, and learning how to eat more vegetables, I think this is a really good way to do it because your veggie stock has so much flavor in it and so much richness to it. They're not going to feel like they're just eating vegetables. You know, it just, it, it's got so many other layers of interest to it and it's so hearty. Um, I don't think they're going to miss the meat. And this smells so delicious already. All right, cameraman, you can stay with that. I'm just grabbing some more ingredients. So the next thing that we're gonna add is that garlic and that ginger. And we're not really, you know, cooking it down. We don't want it to brown because if you brown garlic, you can get very, um, a very burnt, very, um, oh, what am I looking for? Kind of acidic sort of flavor, and we don't want it to get to that point. We just want it to um, get to the point that you can smell it. So when you add your garlic, it only takes about a minute or two till you can just sort of smell it. So as soon as that ginger hit the pan, you can really smell it. It smells so good. And now I'm just stirring in my garlic just until you're sort of just starting to smell it. Mm, so good. All right, that looks good. All right, so we're gonna come back to our stock. Remember I said I measured out my stock into um, exactly how much, the two quart amount that I needed for this recipe. So I am, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in. That is two quarts of veggie stock. We're gonna turn up our heat a little. We want this to come up to a simmer. Okay. And we'll be right back as soon as this comes to a simmer. Hi everybody, welcome back. So our stock is now simmering. So this time we're gonna go ahead and add our cup of pasta. So you're gonna simmer this now for as long as the particular pasta that you chose takes to cook. Mine takes about seven minutes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this at a simmer. I'm gonna let this go for seven minutes and I'll see you back to add the rest of the vegetables. So our pasta's been simmering now. Mine's been simmering for about seven minutes. So I am ready now to add my asparagus. Um, so I just brought my cutting board over. This is all of our chopped asparagus is going in. I'll lift it on here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add our one cup of peas. 
save the rest of those peas um, because we are going to use them for another recipe uh, coming up here in another week or two. The peas, again, add another layer of just hardiness to this, add a little bit of plant-based protein. We're just gonna let this simmer now so the asparagus cooks for three more minutes um, and then we're gonna add our greens. So our asparagus and peas have been simmering in here for about three minutes. Um, so now I'm ready to go ahead and add my greens. Um, again, I did spinach. So I'm just gonna put in a layer. Sort of stir these in. They kind of wilt down just a little bit. We don't have to cook these a lot per se, we just need to kind of get them sort of wilted down a little. You can see that pasta in there has really helped thicken our soup up. More. Great way to help incorporate greens into your diet if you're um, trying to get more dark leafy greens in because it has all that flavor from all the other veggies and from the stock going to be some really flavorful soup. And we just need them to go a minute or so just till they're sort of wilted down. So beautiful. So this is the point too that you want to taste your soup. See if it needs any additional seasoning. looks like we are done. So we would remove this then from our heat. Um, you could serve this in a bowl just as it is, or you can top it with our homemade pesto sauce, a little drizzle of olive oil, a little bit of shaved Parmesan cheese, um, or even some chunks of tofu to add some additional protein. Enjoy.